Well, hello there. Welcome to episode five of Many Roads Traveled. And today's episode, we are going to be going to not only a new country, but a new continent. That's right. Turkey is up. Um, we'll be traveling about 450 to 500 miles along the Turkish coast, otherwise known as Turquoise Coast, because it is very beautiful and it runs along the Mediterranean. Um, so, so far we've traveled about 2,350 miles of our 30,000 mile road trip to Africa. Oh, and we've been traveling for about three weeks now. Okay, and before we crack on with this episode, I thought, well, you're coming on this journey with me and hopefully future journeys along the road. <laughs> uh, why not come on my podcast journey too? So every week I'm going to give a shout out to the top five countries. Um, I have about 16 countries for that I have listeners from, which is amazing. And it would be super cool <clears throat> if I could get to as many countries as I've been to, which is 76 countries. So the top five for this week is Canada, my fellow Canucks, whoop, whoop, uh, USA, Britain. Britain, I'm a little bit disappointed in you since I lived there for 20 years and I am half British, so buck up. <laughs> my fellow Brits. Um, and then little old Ireland, which I love. You are number four. Thank you. And funny enough, when I'm drunk, I sound Irish. So if you ever hear me on an episode when I attack like that, well, you know, I've had a few drums. <laughs> and then coming up five is a tie actually between France and Germany. So hola. Well, that's not German or French. So bonjour. <laughs> And, um, oh, what's German? Oh my gosh. I did two years of German in high school, too. Um, I'll just say my favorite German word, Scheiße. <laughs> but you guys are not that at all. So thank you very much. Danke. There we go. I know. Thank you, anyways. And also, I'm going to do a shout out to uh, one of my listeners who leaves a review. So this week's review is coming from JB and he was actually my first review or she and he said great stuff interesting concept and looking forward to hearing more of your travel stories so thank you JB sorry if you're a girl <laughs> okay so let's crack on oh I was gonna say yeah if you want to shout out as well uh be awesome leave me your review either uh, on Apple if you are a iTunes user or um, Android, uh, st probably the best bet is Stitcher. So if you go to my website, manyroadstravel.com, yeah, the website is finally happening. <laughs> Woohoo! Now it's the blog I'm working on. Um, yeah, so Stitcher, I can see from wherever you are. All right, so yeah, I'll be doing a shout out every week for um, reviews and the, the top five countries. All right, let's just crack on to Turkey. Okay, so where we left off the last episode, I finally got to do my yacht hopping, which was amazing. And, <laughs> and we got on this sweet ride, lovely boat, um, from, uh, Rhodes, Greece to Marmaris, Turkey. Now I had no idea what to expect of Turkey. Cause remember, this is back in 1993 and you couldn't just Google stuff, man. <laughs> and we didn't even have a guidebook for, Europe or Asia, just in case he had one for Africa. And of course, you'll know, or if you're new, um, I left this trip with my friend Casey, who I just recently got in contact with again. So, because we're trying to find our photos from the first part of our trip, which I finally, and I knew my mom had them. <laughs> we found the negatives anyways. So, which is great because I haven't seen those photos for about, oh my God, 25 years probably. So I can finally get those which would be great. So anyways, hey Case, how are you doing bud? He's in Oakland, California now. And weirdly, we haven't seen each other since we parted ways uh, in Kenya uh, in 1993. <laughs> so that's crazy. And also I just want to say at this point, so we've about three weeks in the road and you know, we're with each other 24 seven, but we're, got, we're getting along brilliantly really. And considering we're sharing a room and everything. So, um, everything was cool with that i mean like i said i've traveled even this trip i i after a few months i traveled solo so but uh, so most of my traveling has been solo for at least my long my long trip anyways okay so no idea what to expect about turkey 
we we yeah we got there on this this private yacht and um it was beautiful day sun is shining it's in february 1993 and get to marmers and marmers is a sweet little coastal town it really reminded me of Banff, actually. I, I lived in Banff for a year. So it was kind of small, but it's definitely happening in the summer. So in the winter, it was pretty quiet. And I, it's funny because I've been, now that I've been doing the podcast and the, um, my, my blog, <laughs> uh, I'm kind of looking up these places that I went to way back then to what they are now. And Marmers is really <laughs> a lot bigger. Even then, it had quite a lot of uh, hotels and stuff. But now it looks, it looks pretty swanky. Anyway, so we found uh, a place to stay, and it was so nice because it was so much cheaper. I think we paid like $4 uh, for our pension a night each, which was great because after Europe, we were paying probably like, I don't know, $15, $20 a night each. <clears throat> and that was sharing a room too, right? So, and the food was cheap, and oh, it was great. So, yes, we're in Marmers, and we get settled in, and then we go for a walk, and we, we meet this guy, Nick, who is about our age. Uh, so, at the time, I was 23. And, yeah, he kind of, we just start chatting to him, and then he's like, well, do you want to go for a beer? We're like, yes, <laughs> we're Canadian. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we went to the to this bar. He took us to this little local bar, which was so cool. And again, it was a bit divey, but you know, I love my dive bars. And the best thing was though, because like I said, it's off season, right? So there's really no other, uh, or very few other uh, travelers. So this bar, how it runs is like, basically all the locals have a tap. And then once they're, <clears throat> once the bar runs out of booze, <laughs> they just go around to all the locals, give them their tabs and the locals pay and then they go buy more booze. That's how it's run. <laughs> So that was cool. Anyway, so yes, we had a few drinks with them and it was all cool. And then Nick's like, well, listen, why don't you come fishing with my dad tomorrow? Uh, we leave at four in the morning. <laughs> but Casey's like, sure, why not? So of course we slept in. Um, and so we get a knock on the door. It's Nick at five in the morning. He's like, are you guys still coming? And we're like, oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're literally, get out, we're on the boat by quarter after uh, five. It's me, Casey, and his dad, um, and we were about two hours on the boat to the, the fishing spot, and his dad doesn't speak any English at all, so he's a very, very sweet man. Anyways, and he just fishes by, like, dropping his line over the side with a bunch of hooks. I think he has, like, I don't know, eight or ten hooks on the line, and then just pulls them up by hand. So we we're like, okay, we'll do that, I guess. <laughs> well, I caught ten fish. Casey caught eight, so I beat him. <laughs> And of course, the dad caught about 30 plus an octopus. Uh, but it was a beautiful day. I actually got down to like, uh, like my tank top or vest top. And uh, sh um, I don't know if I had shorts on or not. Probably had shorts underneath like a pair of trousers. Because like I said, it's February, it's still pretty cold. But so getting, that was the first time I got down to shorts and a uh, you know, vest top. And I'm like, oh, this is so nice. Sun was out. And we ended up being on the boat for about 12 hours. It was really amazing day. So then we got back and uh, we went to Nick's parents' house and then her, his mom like cooked up all this fish and he had, they had chicken and rice and salad and Turkish tea and oh my gosh, it was so good. And how, well, most, a lot of Middle Eastern countries, which I know now, but didn't know then, <clears throat> they eat like in a communal setting. So they have a kind of like a tablecloth on the floor and then all the big dishes like just go on the floor and you sit around the, the tablecloth and but this is nothing with uh, Middle Eastern they they won't eat if you're a guest they won't eat until you eat <laughs> so uh, which at first you're just like what what it's weird especially when you can't communicate right in length in the you know I didn't really know any Arabic at the time and uh, don't really know much now but <laughs> I did pick up some words anyway so yeah we're eating and it was delicious and then they they were like, oh, well, you, you need, you, you're leaving the delicacy behind. We're like, what's that? They're like, oh, so his dad shows me. And basically they suck the fish's eyeballs out and chomp on them. And that's the delicacy. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> I don't need to see, see what fish eyeballs taste like, to be honest. But anyway, so, um, yeah, it was a brilliant day. Awesome day. So the next 
a couple of days were basically us just chilling, really, getting drunk quite often. I, uh, one night, basically, we <laughs> were at our pension. They're like, okay, the doors lock at 2 a.m. So you have to be home at 2. And this one night, I was the only woman in this bar. And um, I did have a bit of a run in with the Dutch dude because he's just, it's about 11 p.m. And he just started having a go at me, just saying, what are you doing? You're a woman in here. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're from Holland and no one else has a problem. So piss off, basically. And, and Nick and Casey just kind of gave him, you know, told him off as well. So uh, it's like, whatever, dude. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, so we're like, oh, Casey, it's it's like, it's almost two. So he ran back to the, the guest house. He was like, okay, we'll be back in five minutes. So we went back. He, he, like, I followed him. So we got there probably about 2.30. But we were still, like, in the party main. <laughs> so we decided, like, to pretend to go back into our room. and But we hid around this corner. <laughs> like, I don't know. And uh, anyways, we of course, we got busted. <laughs> but by a, not the owner, but by... Turkish guy worked there who looked like a Turkish Tom Selleck, actually. And he caught me hiding, which was super embarrassing. <laughs> so he was just laughing and he just ended up giving me the key. And he was like, just come back, whatever. So yeah, we went back to the bar and got home about 4.30 in the morning. Needless to say, not much was done the next day, just eating and more drinking, really. So after about four days, we're like, okay, we are becoming a fixed commodity here. Like we now know everyone. <laughs> And to make matters worse, Nick, he and our guest house owner, they just did not like each other as well. But they were really, really sweet to both of us. Like Nick bought white beers most nights. and um, But we were kind of in the middle of this situation. Anyways, and then one of the nights I ended up getting basically just put this way, a little bit of Turkish delight with Nick. <laughs> um, not the full Turkish delight, just a little. Hey, well, you know. Let's give it a go, basically. <laughs> uh, so I, I think, anyway, so we're just about the, I think we're there, for, yeah, four, on the fourth day, we're like, okay, Case, we got to figure out what we're, what we're doing, because we got a long way to go. So we went into a travel agent, and we went to the British Consul, because we didn't know how we were getting to Africa. So they were giving us three options. Like, well, first option is we can go along the Turkish coast and stop on, you know, stop on places along the way and it, and hope to get a ferry from further down the coast to Cyprus and then from Cyprus to go to Israel. But they still weren't a hundred, like they still didn't know if we could get from Cyprus to Israel. Cause all we found out is that there was no ferries leaving Marmaris except back to Rhodes, which we just come from. So the second option was yes, go back to Rhodes and then get a ferry from Rhodes to Cyprus and then Cyprus to Israel. Or the third option, which was to go get a bus to Istanbul and then get a flight from Istanbul either to Israel or to Cyprus. So we decided on the fifth day to let's just hit the coast. Let's go along the Turkish coast. And um, Faye, who is the Australian girl who we met on the boat that we got from Rhodes, we bumped into her a few times too in the bars. <laughs> And she was like, oh, you should really check out Dalian. It's really nice. So we're like, okay. So the fifth day, we're like, right, we're out of here because we'll never leave. <laughs> Marmaris if we don't leave now. So we got, uh, and that's one thing in Turkey is that the for shorter distances, then it's like minivans, basically. So it's only long distances you get on bus. And then sometimes you'll just get a minibus to one little town and then you have to get another minibus to another town kind of thing. So, yep. Yeah, so we got... Uh, the mini bus to Dalian. And yeah, it was super sweet. And Nick's dad had given us a, a note written in Arabic because he had friends that owned this uh, pension in Dalian. So he's like, just give him this note and say you're a friend of Nick's. So we're like, okay, cool. So we get to Dalian and our taxi driver, we just, we gave him the note to show him where we were going. And he was like, oh yeah, I know him. <laughs> so he did charge us for the taxi to the pension, which is awesome. And we got to the pension and they were, gave the note. And they're like, oh, like, honestly, they're just treating us like gold. So it was just like, oh, so sweet. We went to this super cute, oh my gosh, super cute restaurant. I hope it's still there. And it was like this stone circular place. And there was only like six tables there. And of course, we're the only ones there. And the food was a fantastic. I 
don't know the name of it, sorry. And there was a third little daughter, or granddaughter, or daughter who was like five. She got up and did us some like Turkish belly dancing. Oh my gosh, she was so cute. But I was like, whoa, girl, <laughs> there's some 25 year old girls that like to move their booty like that. <laughs> oh, but yeah, she was so cute. So the next day, um, the son of the place we we're staying, he was like, well, listen, what my dad owns a, my dad has a boat. Why don't you, you know, he'll take you out for the day on this boat. We're like, sure. Okay. And they only charge us like 10 bucks and it should have been 25 bucks each. So we're like, okay. We'd like, no, we had no idea what to expect or anything. So we go, um, yeah, get on the boat. And then, uh, there's this river there that goes into like the Med Sea kind of thing. Right. But through the river, there's all these like bulrushes. And, and then we find out that's the river that the African queen, was filmed on. But so we're like, oh, this is cool. And then we're going along and then we see this huge loggerhead turtle because I guess there's loads of um, loggerhead turtles there. And now I'm not sure if it was there back then, but it is there now. There's a there's a, a turtle sanctuary that you can visit as well. But yeah, it was just really, really lovely. So then you we go went along and then there's a beautiful beach and we got up there for a bit on the beach. Then we uh, got back on the boat and then there's this... Um, it's called Radar Hill. So we were like, yeah, okay, let's climb it. So you climb up, beautiful, beautiful views right along the coastline. And yes, that's when we were like, okay, we understand why it's called the Turquoise Coast. And then there's also some really cool ruins up there. Yeah, it's called Akanos. So they're about from 400 BC. <clears throat> and of course, no one was there. So it was pretty cool walking around um, that whole area. And also there's like these um, old tombs that are carved out of the cliff. They kind of look like a mini Petra um, in Jordan. And again, like just super cool, like especially when we weren't expecting anything. And then we kind of finished the day in the hot springs, which was lovely. Um, yeah. And then another awesome day in Turkey. So um, we stayed a couple nights in Dalian and then we head uh, headed off to Kelkan. So again, another minibus. And then along uh, the way to Kalkan, we stopped in Fethiye, which is probably the most well-known of uh, the kind of coastal resorts. We only stayed for three hours. <laughs> I wasn't that impressed. It was uh, back then anyways. I don't know. It was a bit more of a dive. It was just all big hotels. And it was just like, nah, it's not, just don't like the vibe. So yes, yeah, so we just went, kept going to Kalkan. And um, in Kalkan, we met... Um, went to a restaurant and we met these two brothers who were super nice. And again, it's like he, uh, the one brother, Joseph is like, well, um, well, basically <laughs> the, the first that we went to the restaurant, we didn't have enough money to pay for our bill. We we're about a dollar 20 short. So we went back the next morning to, to pay the rest of our bill and they were super cool about it. So anyway, so Joseph's like, well, what are you doing today? Do you want to come with me to, um, to the mountains to get some sesame butter? And then um, go to my family's uh, house in the vi this little village. And we're like, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we drove into the mountains. Like, it's so beautiful. Like, um, there's like evergreen trees, and it, it, you know, it's like rocky mountains kind of thing, cliffy, cliffies. Uh, no, rocky mountains. <laughs> Not the Rocky Mountains, just kind of Rocky Mountains with trees. Anyways, um, yeah, so we, he picks up these huge two tubs of uh, sesame butter. And then went back to his his home, this little village. It was super cute. And again, like, treated like royalty, like his family, who you know, spoke no English. But yes, put on a spread for us again. And you, you take the sesame butter and mix it with honey. And, and you know, they've got this, like, paper-thin bread. And you just put that on there. Oh my God, it was so good. I can still remember the taste of that. It was delicious. Um, and then the mom had made some bean soup and tea and stuff. So yeah, spent the afternoon with them, which was really, really cool. Um, yeah, then we, you know, headed back to, to Calcan, which I, I really liked Calcan as well, actually. So the next day we decided, okay, we, we, let's go. Cause we'd heard about this other beach, which is called, uh, uh, Patera, Patera. And uh, so we got Joseph, we, we paid him um, to drive us to, to the beach and just spent there for the day. I mean, again, it's not still February, so <laughs> not bikini season, that's for sure. But it was so nice that this be beach is beautiful. Like it was two kilometers long. It's like, a, I think it was in a bit of a cove. 
and again like just surrounded by cliffs so yeah just uh i went for a walk by myself up these cliffs and just chilled out I had my walkman back then you had walkmans with tape cassette players so i don't know if you know what those are <laughs> but that was our tunes yeah and then um yeah just spent the day there and then we were gonna get a bus back and we or the minivan but we missed the the, the minivan so we met this, I don't know, some random dude and we're like, oh, he's like, you missed it by five minutes. He goes, just get in my car. We're going to, we're going to chase the bus down. <laughs> oh my gosh. He was driving like a lunatic, like, and we pull up beside this, he catches the bus <laughs> and he's like hawking and hawking, pull over, pull over, <laughs> which the bus did. So we're like, we got on the bus. We were so embarrassed. We're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, don't mind us. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, back in Calcat, and then uh, we're like, okay, we got it. Let's get, we're going to go to Antalya next. So we get to Antalya, which was actually the biggest city that we'd been to so far in Turkey, which is not still not that big, but you know, it was a pretty big city. But it was really nice. I, I really liked it uh, as well. It has a, a nice little harbor, and there's an old city, and then the whole, all along the city walls, it's surrounded by cliffs, and there's also another really nice beach there. So we chilled out there for, I think, just a night. And then we went to Alanya. Not, didn't like that as much because it was just pissing rain the whole time we were there. And we ran out of money, of course. And um, it was a Saturday. So we didn't have any money till Monday. Because again, no ATMs back then. So we had to... And the banks were closed on weekends, right? So sometimes you can go to a PPT, which is the post offices, to change money. And the pissing rain. We're walking. And we're kind of, at this point, getting on each other's nerves a little bit. <laughs> but it had been a month. That, well, I think we had our one-month anniversary there of traveling. So we both went our separate ways. And I, um, and Lanya is really, really, it's a weird town. Like, it's really spread out. So we walked miles in the rain. Anyway, so I found a PPT that was open, and but then th there was two guys working there. One guy was like, oh, I'll, I'll exchange your travel checks, and the other guy was like, I won't. But luckily, there was someone else in there, like just a customer or something, and he's like, listen, I'll sign it. I'll do it for you. And he even gave me the bank rate, which was awesome. So we got some money. And so I go back to our hotel, and I was like, okay, guys, we got some money. Now, here's the tip bring a deck of cards bring cards with you when you're traveling even if you're traveling solo because we played so much blackjack <laughs> in that month well the whole time we're together but especially that month it was ridiculous and i had been losing up until around this point right so i think i was down six dollars and 25 cents i don't know why we we're maybe we we're playing per quarter i can't remember now well my luck finally turned and I all of a sudden I went up. I was up a dollar twenty-five, right? So Casey was down a dollar twenty-five, right? Well, he just decided to throw a massive temper tantrum <laughs> and throw the cards in this back alley in the rain. I'm not playing anymore. I was like, okay. <laughs> so on our second day at Alanya, it actually stopped raining for a little bit. So I went to, by myself. I went to the beach and um Again, had the beach myself <laughs> and climbed some more cliffs <laughs> and then uh, went back to the hotel and it was locked. So Casey was out doing something. So um, I decided to walk around the market, found a, a deck of cards, so I bought a new deck of cards uh, and then went back to the beach, had some lunch, whatever, and then came back in case he was there. So we're like, OK, so tomorrow we're leaving uh, to, get, to get just to get out of here. <laughs> we need to get out get going to the to the get hopefully at the ferry so that night we end up playing cards again well i still kept winning right casey loses his mind and just trashes our hotel room he like actually breaks the shower rips the shower like the rod with the water pipe f like from the wall i was just like oh my god you gotta chill out it's like six bucks <laughs> I don't even think I was up six bucks. I think I was only up. Uh, no, maybe I had got up to six dollars. So it was kind of reversed. I was down six bucks. I went up, and now I was up six bucks. And I was just like, "Case man, you're losing your mind. <laughs> like, just relax." <laughs> anyway, so we get uh, 
Right, next where yes, we get we go to Tisagu. So it was about six and a half hours. So we're on a big bus, which is full of Turkish uh, chain smokers, which is great because neither of us smoked at the time. So once we get off the bus, this kid's like, "Oh, there's no, um, there's no ferries leaving from here for like two days, but there is one leaving tomorrow for Mersin." So we literally just so we're like, "Get back on this another bus, two hours to Mersin." So it's like eight and a half hours around a bus. Get to to Mersin. They're like, oh no, there's no ferries until Wednesday, like five days from now. But there is one from Tasagu <laughs> leaving in two days. We're just like, oh my God. I knew like my gut instinct. Always, always listen to your gut. Because I my gut said, Don't listen to this kid. <laughs> but hey ho. So we went back to Tasagu, waited there for our two days, got our ferry tickets, and Finally, we were leaving Turkey. I absolutely love Turkey. I mean, it was just crazy how the first people we met at every single place just took us under their wing, basically. And just the generosity and the kindness. It was sometimes embarrassing because because most of these people couldn't, we couldn't communicate, didn't speak English and I didn't speak Arabic. So I just, you know, if I could express my gratitude, how grateful we were, like how kind they were to us. And, um, yeah, and I've been back to Turkey since, um, I've spent another five weeks in Turkey and I've, so I've been quite a while over Turkey and I, yeah, I love it. I love the food. I love people. The, the country itself is beautiful. There's a lot, a lot of, uh, historical things to see as well as beautiful nature. So highly recommend Turkey. So let's, get over to you know what time it is tam's top tips <laughs> so my first tip would be to yes definitely definitely explore the Tur the the turkish turquoise coast line and i recommend do what we did like just you, you know jump on minivans from one place to another there's so much to explore there's it's really beautiful and like I said super nice people or even rent a car and then you get to even more places that are kind of off the beaten track. Okay, tip number two would be, yes, talk to the locals. Like, that's, they know where to go. They know what to do. And like I said, like, there was days we didn't spend any money at all. And we were being fed feasts and, like I said, going, taking out on boats and people, villages and, like, going to people's homes. And it was amazing. Um, so, yeah, definitely, you know, talk to the locals. They're really nice people. And tip number three, food. Okay, maybe not fish eyes, but <laughs> the rest of the food, like the, the chicken kebabs and uh, doners and all the fresh seafood, delicious. And like I said, the beer is good too. I'm not a fan of Raki, which is their like local shots, kind of like Uzo, aniseed flavored. That's just because I got alcohol poisoning in Cartagena, Colombia <laughs> when I was 19. And to this day, I do not like Uzo drink or um, aniseed drinks. So... Rest of the food, yummy, really, really good. And my top tip for solo female travelers, my shout out, um, would be, you know, dress appropriately Al along the coast and when you're on beaches and stuff. Yeah, fair. It's, you know, just like any, like how you dress back home kind of thing. Bikinis and stuff is fine. Um, but if you go, are going to be going to other like off the coast or when you're traveling like wear t-shirts and like long long ish shorts or, or skirts or parts of istanbul for sure and east turkey yeah no, for sure not even shorts but yeah along the coast yeah you're fine like you know just don't be wearing like skimpy clothes when you're not on the beach you know a you'll get less um male attention slightly <laughs> but also you know you need to respect countries cultures you are going to their country so i always say respect their cultures and always try and learn a few words of um the local language to at least please thank you How, you know two beers <laughs> <laughs> and i know turkish it is bira bira which means one beer <laughs> okay so i think that's about wraps it up and on next week's episode find out what happened and if we even got to cyprus and if we get any closer to Africa. Okie dokie. And um, like I said, the website's up, manyroadstravel.com. 
get over there and please start leaving those reviews so i'll give you a shout out every week okay until next time safe travels one road at a time <laughs>